Hi guys, we're gonna get weaving today. Um, I want to start out by showing you um, the six millimeter polycord that we use of the Bonnie. This is made in Pepperell Mass. And um, this particular student has chosen black. So we're gonna get started. Um, what we typically do is decide pick colors. One of these, I'll refer to it as a skein, one of these will do both layers. If you want to switch colors for like the second layer, you decide which direction you're going to start. I'm going to start from my left and work all across. Um, we're going to do the first one is black and the second is a different color that will switch it up. So when I initially start to tie this on, I want to leave a long tail, one that touches the table. So give at least a foot because at the end we're going to go ahead and weave this in. Don't cut it short because it will unravel. So what I'm doing now, I'm tying this with a square knot, so I want to tie this as tight as I can, right? And then you swap hands and it feels quite opposite and you want to lock it with the second knot. All right, now, let that just sit in there, that tail, just ignore it for now. We will deal with it at the end and make it look nice. All right, um, let the skein stay here. Don't pick it up, leave it right there. Now we're always going to have loops so I also want to make sure I have my large Q size crochet hooks so I have two of those handy by now I'm going to come across with a loop this is my initial step so come across the loop everything is a series of loops so come across wrap it around the dowel then up mm -hmm. through the center so pull it pretty tight I'm going to put this first crochet hook in just to stay put. Sometimes an extra hand is helpful. All right, so we're across here. This is a single string. We've got to create a loop. So I'm going to hold on to this loop and I'm going to grab, there goes my skein, that's fine. I'm going to grab an arm's length and it's going to create this big zigzag. So remember, I come across, it's already a single strand. I need to hold on to this. I'm going to create a loop. It's going to take and toss it across. So I call this the zigzag. So we're here. So I take this new loop. We're going to switch sides, alternate. I'm going to pull it tight. Everything's about being tight. And then to this loop and wrap it around and up to the middle. I'll have extra and I'll deal with that in a second. So here's my second crochet hook. Things are slippery because of the polyurethane on the footstool. And that's okay. All right. So now the crochet hook should start to stay. So I have my loop automatically on this side. So I'm gonna go ahead and wrap it tight around the dowel and up through the middle. Hold it there. Now when I grab it with a crochet hook, I wanna push this old loop back on the crochet hook and make room for the new loop. All right, so I'm gonna grab that and instead of just pulling straight back with a crochet hook, I've gotta face it down and it slips right through that last loop pretty slick. All right, so I'm gonna pull all of my slack tight, keep my crochet hook in place, and here I came across again, now I have a single strand. I gotta hold on to the extra. I'm gonna make a loop, because I don't have a loop. I'm gonna take an arm's length and toss it across, so I've created the zigzag, right? So I take this and I wrap it around, always around the top, and I pull up the extra slack, always pulling it tight, either side. So I'm gonna grab with my crochet hook. Now I have my existing loop on here, right? And I wanna push that back. Everything's about being tight and snug. So I'm gonna hold my new loop, wrap it around the crochet hook, and turn it down so I can just slip it back through. All right, now I have extra. I wanna tighten that, squish the rows towards myself, tighten the extra, and I have this loop already across, right? I just have extra, so I just get rid of the extra. So now I have my loop, wrap it around the top rung and up through the middle. Grab it, face my crochet hook down, wiggle it on through, All right? It's extra, pull it tight, pull it tight. So now I don't have a loop, I'm gonna make the loop. I'm gonna make that giant zigzag. So here's, wrap it around, have it come up through the middle. Grab it with a crochet hook, face it down, wiggle it through. There's always slack, there's always extra, so pull it. And then 
you're ready for the next loop de loop. All right, wrap it around, grab it, and go back on through. All right, so I'm just gonna motor on. You can probably slow this down, pause it. I'm gonna keep going. You can probably see the skein on the floor. <laughs> we can vacuum it if it gets dusty. When you have a lot of you in the shop working on this and you can hear all the stools squeaking, that's a famous sound, right? All right, so keep going. This is an eighth grade project. What's challenging is keeping this tight. You want to make sure that when you are using the crochet hook, you grab one of these strands, not two, because then you're going to try and pull too many things through the existing loop. So everything is loops. Everything is loops. As I go, I want to pull things tight towards me. I'm sure you could start out and reverse everything. I'm right-handed, so that's probably why I start the way I do, but there's no reason you couldn't flip it. Start out on the opposite side and pull towards your dominant. Okay. Now, when we get to the point where we're filling this, you're like, okay, I'm done. You want to consider how you're going to weave, what kind of pattern you're going to weave on the yeah. left side when you do the second layer. So perpendicular to this. Do you want a checkerboard? Do you want to come up with your own pattern? I have some patterns that I've purchased from Pepperell Braiding Company out of Massachusetts. Um, those I'm sure could be modified but they're suggested patterns, it's pretty nice. You could do letters, animals, designs. I'm just going to stick to the classic checkerboard with this. And as you go, you've got to push these rows towards you. The more you fit, the more rows you fit, the tighter the weave going the other way. That just slipped off, but that's okay. Just pull it all across. You'll get in a groove. I think some of, sometimes the tricky parts are when you have left for a day and come back to class and you are in the middle of weaving and you kind of forget where you left off. And that's understandable. So this is one of those videos that you can go back and get to a similar point where you were at, pause it, and check it out. That'll help. Right. Now if we have 55 minute long classes, to be reasonable, to do both layers, on average, I would say about four classes by the time you set up and you get your weaving and remember all this. It's challenging getting it tight, tight, tight. There's kind of a happy medium. You don't want to have it so tight that it distorts the shape of your stool, but you want it to be really snug. Over time, the weaving does loosen up a bit. Not that you want a saggy seat. No. This material is pretty excellent. It, it is fusible, and if you are using ends, you could essentially, I lost my loop, you could essentially melt and fuse the ends together, probably secure it with a knot also, then fuse the end and melt it together. You could, of course, change colors and be as colorful as you want. Now, my second video, if you're going in order of events, like, okay, your first layer, which this is, is done. The second layer, I've had a video up for a longer period of time because my classes at that time were having a lot of help with the first layer. Um, I have been meaning to do this video now for a while, so I'm glad I am. 
Um, this is obviously the first layer, and I'll show you how to end it off and then start the second layer, which is already a video that I posted on YouTube. I hope this helps make the initial starting of how do you weave more independent. Don't feel bad, you can mute me if you don't want to hear my advice. <laughs> All right, so I'm starting to get this full. Um, I want to keep going a few more. I can always add another or take a few out. I want to have a minimum of 48 strands. I like a number that's divisible by four or five. Um, I say this because I want to leave the opposite direction and have four strings, you don't have a choice, four strings leave the opposite direction, and I like things um, pretty even and matched up, same number. So four strands weave one way in a checkerboard and four strings weave the other way. All right, so I'm gonna hold up. Let me give us a quick count. Two. That's awesome. That's what I want. Okay, so this is great. I need to grab some scissors. Good planning. Hold on. Okay, so I'm going to cut this and make a tail extra long. Okay. So I have 52 of these single long strings. Now I'm gonna come back to this loop. I need to be able to remove this crochet hook without it unraveling. So if you saw me do that, all right, I had this crochet hook in, all right? Now I have this string is gonna go through that last loop. And if I tighten it, that's nice. We'll spread these apart after, all right? Then I'm going to go around this last loop and I'm going to grab the single string now and help pull this through this loop, okay? Now I could leave it just like that, but I'm going to do an extra, an extra loop, right? Can't hurt. All right, at the end, I will deal with this long string and weave it in at the very, very end and I'll get there. Okay, so this is 52 strings across. This first string, I will do another loop when it's time to weave in at the end and hide the fact that it sticks up higher and you'll never know, all right? So we have 52 strings across. So that allow me to start my second color and go this way. So this more or less is where my video, the next one starts off, starting the second layer. All right, thank you. Good luck.